and welcome to our new Bikes and Gear video, our wild camping setup for bicycle touring. In this video we're going to talk about all our camping equipment from our tent to our sleeping bags, accessories and have a look at how everything is stored on our bikes. Please remember this is our personal setup and it may not be suitable for everyone. Alright, before we get started we're going to go out, get dressed and make ourselves a nice coffee and then we're going to start talking about our tent. So let's begin with talking about our tent, the very heart of our camping equipment. We have a Decathlon tent, the 4-class Trek 900 two-person tent to be more specific. And this might be a little bit surprising to you because it is a relatively cheap tent, but in our opinion, materials tend to fade and fail over time and tents tend to get worn out no matter the price tag. So we don't really see the point in spending an absolute fortune on a tent that will probably yeah, fade or fail as quickly as a not so expensive tent. This is not meant to say that this tent does not have good quality, it has the same dimensions, so weight and packaging size as higher end tents with a price tag three times the, yeah, three times as much, uh, but also a really really good quality. Therefore we are really happy with this tent. So we have chosen the two-person version of this tent. It is also available as a three-person version and a three-person tent is actually often a popular choice even for only two people. The reason we have chosen only the two-person version is because it's more compact, not just um, in its packaging dimensions and weight, but also when setting it up between trees, for example, it has a much uh, smaller footprint so as to not take up so much space. It is also warmer because, of course, it's smaller, so it's easier for two people to heat a two-person tent than a three-person tent with a larger volume. The downsides of the two-person tent are that it has less space, so we have to keep most of our gear, the gear that we actually take to the tent in the outside, in the abscess, uh, and not inside, which might be more secure. Um, and you do tend up, uh, you do end up touching the sides of the tent with a big sleeping bag, for example, meaning it does tend to get more wet uh, in the inside than a larger tent. All right, so this tent has a few features that we really like. For example, the extraordinary large ventilation uh, holes at the top of the tent here. Now this is really, really important and great for de um, decreasing condensation by just allowing more air to circulate through the tent. Not only does it have this huge ventilation hole, but also when you close the zipper, you can with a second zipper actually open up another ventilation hole, so to say, which is also protected by the rain with this big flap. Furthermore, the abscess on the side here has an actual floor, which is really nice because then all your gear, especially in dust or when it's wet, doesn't get so wet, is uh, protected. It even connects up here to the outer tent, the inner tent to the outer tent, to the fly sheet, um, to kind of create a little barrier that when it rains also from the side, it's also protected. So this is really cool. Speaking of the abscess, you can maybe see we have a footprint or a ground sheet which is essentially the bottom of the inner tent extra one more time underneath it just for extra waterproofing and um, more protection against thorns and so on and an actual two by two meter piece of tarpaulin tarp um, also because this is really tough to protect against um, sharp objects like rocks or thorns or so on and so far we've never had a problem with any punctures or anything like that so, on the inside, this tent also has a few features that we really, really like. For example, this little latch here to store the door really quickly. Then, 
huge mosquito nets all the way around the tent. These not only allow for great visibility when you're only sleeping with the inner tent, but also for a lot of air circulation like we mentioned before. Then it not only has big pockets up here, but also over there. And these are especially useful for putting your phone in. You don't have to sit up every time you want to get your phone out, for example. And finally, a hook and little latches where you could put a, a string for a light or drying clothes, but we don't really use this that often. All right, let's continue with talking about our sleeping bags and the sleeping mats. We both have down feather sleeping bags. The main reason being that they offer a better thermal protection for lesser dimensions than the synthetic equivalents. We both have a sleeping bag from Mountain Equipment, but um, these are different models. I have the Earthrise 600, which is actually completely filled with recycled down feathers. It has a comfort, temper comfort temperature of minus one. And as you maybe can see, Toby's is larger and warmer. It's, um, it has a comfort, temper comfort temperature of minus nine. And this is the classic 1000. Um, with my sleeping bag, we are actually really happy. Um, so far, I wasn't cold in it. Um, even with sleeping at minus 10, which is also because of my sleeping bag liner, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, Toby's sleeping bag also um, held him warm all the time, but the biggest problem with this one is that it tends to get really wet when it's cold outside. Um, so we have a theory that, it, that this is also because, uh, one reason of course, because it's warmer, um, and it condensates more, um, but also because it has a waterproof uh, outer material. And our theory is that the water condensates on this much more than on mine. Because mine is usually a bit wet, like um, down here, but nowhere else. And Toby's is usually completely wet when it's cold like this. Um, one other nice feature, which is because it's the same brand, we can zip our sleeping bags together. And with, uh, when it's not too cold, um, this is really nice just to yeah, have one big sleeping bag for the two of us. Okay, next thing I'm going to talk about are the sleeping bag liners. This is mine and this is a thermal light sleeping bag. So it adds about five more um, degrees of um, comfort temperature, uh, which is also one reason why I haven't been cold in my sleeping bag all the time now. With Toby having a much warmer one, he just has a very thin sleeping bag liner. And um, this is just to protect the sleeping bag from, from our sweat and maybe some dirt or so, so because you can wash these easily, but you shouldn't wash the sleeping bags. Um, before I'm gonna talk about the mats, just one little thing. You can see we're using this poncho, or I'm using my poncho as a pillow. Um, we used to have inflatable pillows, but uh, the bladders um, just open up all the time, like the seams open up, and at some point we said, no thanks, <laughs> we're just gonna use some clothing and it's working pretty well, so we don't need an extra pillow. So last thing in here I'm gonna talk about are the sleeping mats. We have the same one. It's, a, um, it's from Freeluft. Um, and so far these sleeping mats have been great. They're inflatable um, with a little bit of foam inside, so they're um, protecting from down from the cold, um, some thermal protection. Um, the only problem now, after over a year, is that Toby's sleeping mat has developed kind of a bump around here. You can't see it because uh, we let the air out, <laughs> but it's like this, um, because I don't know, the glue between the foam and the material um, doesn't stick anymore and so we gotta get a new one because Toby can't really use this inflated anymore unfortunately. But they haven't had any punctures or anything and mine is still holding up really well. You can see it here. <laughs> yeah. 
and now we actually have to get out the sleeping bags so they can still dry and air out a bit. So before we talk about how we store all our camping gear on our bikes, we want to talk about a few little more accessories. Um, first of all, starting over here, this is our a little tripod, camera tripod with a phone clamp, which we use as a little <laughs> tent cinema, you could say. Um, it's really nice not having to hold the phone if we're watching a movie or something in the tent. And yeah, this is great. We just put it in the middle and then we can both uh, easily watch a movie on the phone together. We also have headlights. This is Luisa's. I have the same one. It's the Petzl Actic. Uh, we're really happy with these headlights because they're really, really compact but pretty bright. I think they have around 320, 350 lumen. Um, and also have a red light. When we're in the tent and at night, we only use the red light to preserve our night vision. Then our sleeping bag liners, as Luisa already mentioned, this is mine packed up, so very, very small and light. And then we have some sleeping clothes. Um, we like to get out of our cycling clothes at night um, just because it's more comfortable. We have our old merino cycling shirts, it's the long sleeve, which we now use for sleeping. For me, just some boxer shorts, some nice and warm uh, socks, merino socks, and um, yeah, some long uh, insulating jogging pants. So all these things, except for the tripod, but including our sleeping mats and sleeping bags, go in our rack packs. Um, the reason being that we have all this in our rack packs is that when it's raining or in general, we only have to literally take this one bag from our bikes to our tent and we have everything we need, except for the tent, which is separate, but we'll show you that later. Um, so yeah, if it's raining, we just take this one bag, everything is waterproof, into the tent, we can close up the tent and just unpack everything straight from this bag. Also when we're packing it up again, which we usually do when we're in the tent and not outside it, like now, um, we can just put everything in there before even having to open the tent. So before we packed everything away, we had breakfast to allow our sleeping bags and tent to dry out a little more. But now we can show you how everything is stored on our bikes. So here we have the footprint and the tent. The tent is pretty small and weighs under two kilos. So it's, it's really like the same dimensions as higher end tents, as we mentioned before. So the footprint and the tent we keep in this rear pannier uh, with only a few other things where it's not so bad if it gets moist because sometimes we pack away the tent uh, wet if we're in a hurry. So the tarp goes in here in the back. Then the tent sits on this side vertically in the pannier. The reason being that this way the center of gravity because the tent is heavier than a few other things even though it's only two kilos. Uh, the center of gravity is nice and far forward and down low which is the ideal spot obviously the lower and the closer to the center of the bike um, which you can have. Then worth mentioning we also have as part of our camping equipment two chairs. These are the Helinox chair one. These weigh just under a kilo and are really, really comfortable and we absolutely love having these. And then we still have our one other pair of shoes, except for our sandals, which we usually wear. Waterproof shoes and winter shoes, so thick shoes, which also go on top. So this pannier is a little heavier, but 
yeah, it's down low, good for the center of gravity. And that's why we keep this all in here. Another big advantage of keeping all our sleeping stuff, like our sleeping bags and mats, in our rack packs is that they are pretty light, especially for their volume. And this is good because they are so high up that it's pretty a pretty bad position for the center of gravity, but because they are so light, it's okay again. So we keep this on top of here to kind of even out the space um, between our two rear panniers. We keep our tarps there and we actually have two, one two by two meter tarp, which Luisa carries under her rack pack for the tent and then a three by two meter tarp, which I carry, um, which we put over the bikes at night, which you might have seen at the beginning of this video. We do this um, not only to protect the bikes from condensation, but also because um, it's good theft protection in the sense that a tarp is really loud if you try to move it. And if it's over the bikes, we would definitely hear it more if somebody tried to go to our panniers than without it. So, the rack pack then just sits on top of the ear and then we attach it with some straps. So now that everything is packed away, we're ready to leave this really nice and quiet camping spot. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you could get some tips out of this video. And if you do it differently, we would love to hear from you. Just comment below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.